a coder is the same as a programmer. They both convert coffee into code, right? Well, yes, but no. Coders are more like musicians in an orchestra. They play their instruments very good, but they do not make up the music. They play somebody else's music. In the last 18 years I worked in all these roles, but it took me about a decade or so to understand the differences. I even have scars from an interview where I described myself as an architect, which left my self-esteem shattered in many, many places for many, many years. More on that later, but in my first job we just did what needed to be done. Ten years later I worked in a large corporation and I slowly started recognizing the differences between all these roles, or at least I think I did, so I am researching this and here is what I got so far. Like musicians I mentioned before, coders just write code based on somebody else's instructions. In some countries coders are even uh, only making HTML and CSS from design files. Is that coding or is that programming? A long, long time ago, before PCs could fit into a single room, programmers would write their logic and instructions, and I hope you're sitting down for this one, on paper forms like this one from Wikipedia. And they would hand these scrolls to coders who would code those instructions into physical punching cards, cards that were then inserted into a computer to execute on them. We actually had those cards in my school, uh, yes I'm that old. And this also might shock you, it turns out you can actually program without writing code. Blockly, Power BI, Node-RED, Zapier, even using ChatGPT you give it some instructions and you get formatted results without writing actual code. Even toys could be programmed, like this toy that my son plays with, without any code. So programming involves basically making processes, figuring out some different algorithms, but also understanding business logic about the product that they are writing, and they can also write code so they would fit somehow around the coder here. Once upon a time, when I was desperate for work, I applied for a position of system architect. I had no idea what it was, but I had 10 years of experience and a gigantic ego, so how hard can it be? I watched every YouTube video about architecture. They flew me over and asked me to solve something for them. And I squeezed all the buzzwords from YouTube. Showtime. Scalability, microservices, separate code base, dynamics, solid, monolith, DevOps, serverless, multi-tenancy, scalability, containers, Docker, load balancing, did I mention scalability? API decoupling, GraphQL availability, status scalability, API system integration, continuous development, scalability. A hair-raising silence descended upon us as we sat there in the office thinking the very same thing. I had no idea what I'm talking about. And it also took me many many orbits around the sun to start programming without actually writing the code, but using only pen and paper or maybe a whiteboard. And it has completely changed the way I approach programming now. I believe that I managed to think before actually writing any code. An architect is someone who plans, designs and oversees the construction of a project, any project, a building or a software in our case. They are responsible for high level structure, right? And I talked with several of my imaginary friends about architecture and what I found so far is that this is basically one single thing and that is two things. System architecture, software architecture and process architecture and also a bunch of other small sub things. One is someone who works with say Azure or AWS architecture, so they set up all the services and all the deployment and say all the databases in a service, so they will decide and often continue say authentication and maybe even logging and as well security of some application, of some project, to ensure that the planned growth and future of the project is in the right setup from the start. And from my experience, this group of architects that work with some specific platforms are not necessarily into programming. It used to be that majority of architects started as programmers, but recently people from all kinds of backgrounds can take courses and education on the architecture and start working with architecture from the beginning. But architects could also organize software itself. They could work in a large organization or on large project and figure out how say multiple apps could communicate together on a larger system. And here I mean more on a programmatic level maybe. They could uh, decide what will be a how behind the firewall for example, and what will be a microservice and what will be monolith. And third, they could work on processes in uh, software, some methods, for example deployment process, 
the migration process or the adoption process for some complex systems. So basically some system integration. So I would position architects around programmers here. They could be positioned somewhere here on the side, maybe with the DevOps roles or other operational roles. Or, or am I still in the wrongs? Please let me know if you have figured this out. Now developers. Generally, a developer is someone to whom you give an idea, a tiny spark, and they will give you fire. Basically, they are figuring out what is the real-life problem that the client is solving and then suggesting on how to actually solve it. So developers could write the code in the end, but they will also do some more, much more, like gathering requirements, analyze them, test ideas and improve them. Project planning, they could determine what tasks need to be done, who will do them and it want what order. Business understanding, they will work with stakeholders, project managers or business analysts to understand the business goals and the user needs. And this helps them make the informed decision when it comes to design, architecture, maybe even choices, the technology, or maybe the programming part itself. They might also prioritize tasks as they understand the business impact and what drives revenue or customer engagement, thus thinking about the budget of the entire project. They could even work with the deployment of the project, making the software available to the users and updating or upgrading it if necessary. They can also translate technical jargon into regular language. This makes them extremely useful in meetings where both business and technical people are present at the same time. And I've been doing this part since my early days of programming, believing that this is what every programmer does, not knowing that there are more roles into that. So when I changed the company, our boss would just tell us what we should do after he has talked with the customer, which felt a bit strange to be honest. But I guess I just didn't understood my new role at the time. And uh, so if you're working in a smaller company, you're probably a developer. You're doing all of these things at the same time. Now, software engineer is a very interesting one. And usually people assume that software engineer is the same as a developer or maybe a programmer. But there are differences. We said that the coder is writing code, right? Programmer can program with or without code and the architecture thinks about the overall structure, while developer makes your idea into a successful product. Now, the term engineer implies a builder of some sort, somebody who is methodical, uses proven principles, somebody who disassembles systems into smaller parts, hide complex processes, basically a person who applies engineering principles. And since we programmers do this already, it means that programmers are engineers, basically, right? When I went to interview I mentioned earlier, I figured that years of experience are enough to make my ego to something more than just a programmer, but an architect. What a title. And what a failure of an interview. I felt like I failed in my career for not getting the title. I didn't deserve it after all those years. It is only a year later maybe that an architect at her work talked how he actually admires programmers because programmers can do architecture when needed while he cannot do programming at all. So there I was disappointed for an entire year because I failed the interview while it turns out I was at the wrong interview altogether. And I admire architects while some architects admire programmers. And then it hit me. Progression through these roles is not always linear. There is also no clear line between them. When critical, a programmer can do testing, coding, architecture and development. He will probably never be a better architect than the architect himself. But in some companies, or maybe even some teams, some projects, people might simply agree on their current roles. And they could just split responsibilities between those roles. And these definitions could even vary from project for project, so they are not necessary progression in one's career, be aware of that. But where is the engineer then? It turns out engineer is in most cases a formal education. In Canada, for example, this is a regulated profession, so you cannot call yourself a software engineer if you are not educated for it. You can do the engineering, but you cannot use the title on LinkedIn or in your CVs and, and publicly. In practice, a lot of places do not make any difference in formal education and even title description. Each programmer is basically practicing engineering because, surprisingly enough, we do use engineer principles to make software, unless you work with WordPress. But it's also catchy for companies to say we have 10 engineers on a project rather than 10 simple programmers. But definitions matter. 
In my village, we had a guy who could fix your back, twisted arms and twisted fingers, and doctors from local hospitals would sometimes send patients to him. Despite him being a healer, he never got to wear the white coat, and people called him simply Velia, as that was his name. He does the same job as a doctor, sometimes even better, but he is not a doctor. But do not get caught up in titles. If you want to call yourself an engineer, surely you can do that, as most titles are meaningless anyway. But they help insecure people feel good about themselves. Watch here how to invest as a developer. Bye!